Hey, it's Mariana, and thank you for joining me on the Commitment to Growth podcast, a platform dedicated to helping you build resilience for lifelong momentum. We chat about healing, mindset development, and how to live in your authentic truth, because often it's not our problems that cause our dissatisfaction, but everything around them that we haven't yet addressed. Thank you for joining me today, and let's get into this week's conversation. Welcome to the Commitment to Growth podcast, everyone. My name is Mariana. I am the host of the Commitment to Growth podcast, of course, and the founder of Commitment to Growth Resilience Coaching. If you're new, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. In any case, thank you so much for being here today for the third official round of the podcast's monthly Q&A. Now, I just want to start this episode off by saying thank you and expressing so much gratitude as always because this month was my first time really trying the monthly theme on the podcast and on my Instagram page. So if it's your first time here, the theme for the month of April was healing the inner people pleaser. And I facilitated two conversations here on the podcast. The first one being a solo episode with yours truly, of course, called it's not that you're a people pleaser, it's that you fear rejection. And just this last week, I released a conversation with the wonderful, the beautiful Karana Soto on embracing your truth to break the chains of people pleasing. And so well received your responses were so amazing you were so engaged with the content and it was just so fantastic to hear that it helped so so many of you so i'm very excited for what's to come we're gonna keep this this train this this monthly theme thing going till at least the end of 2024 i just think that it's such a beautiful way to really segment our healing and just have a place where you can land and know that there are dedicated resources towards a particular topic so as I'm recording this, it is April 2024, and the theme for May is going to be how to allow more love into your life. I am so excited for this round of conversations. That month is going to be all about really addressing the blocks in our life that prevent us from receiving more love, being open to being seen, to being heard, what our fears are around being seen and being heard and showing up in our authentic truth, and what some tangible practices are that we can start opening that heart center. So I am super, super excited to share that with you and to just continue having these conversations because I want you to receive more love. You deserve it. You are so worthy of it. And just to continue this healing work together because it's so, so special. Now, if you haven't been here before and it's your first time tuning into one of these monthly Q&As, essentially what happens is that at on the last Thursday of every month, I release a question submission on my Instagram story. If you're not following me, it's at commitment to growth. You can check the show notes to click the link, follow me on Instagram. We can stay connected that way. So what I do is I release that question submission at 12 p.m. on the last Thursday of every month. And the first five, six, seven questions I put up the limit um, are the ones that I answer on the segment for you and of course these ones to keep in theme with april are all about healing your inner inner people pleaser so that is what we are going to be getting into today as always you were very engaged and the questions that came through this month are fantastic so engaging so buckle your seat belts grab a notepad and we're getting right into it because i just love them i've got them right here in front of me and real quick before we get into the bulk of today's conversation i want to take a moment to respectfully acknowledge that this conversation is being recorded from the land of the Quiquitlam peoples upon whose land i am very very privileged fortunate and blessed and grateful to be an uninvited uninvited visitor and settler to these beautiful lands and i I'm continuing my work and my practice towards truth and reconciliation to reflecting on how I can continue to give back to unearthing these truths, to showing up for these communities in a way that honors their needs and how they need us to be receptive to how they want to be seen and how they want their cultures, their traditions, their their languages, their belief systems to be integrated into the common consciousness. So I look forward to con continuing my journey into the truth and reconciliation to spreading the message and i encourage you to do the same if you aren't aware of what indigenous communities are present in and around where you are living right now so thank you for being here thank you for sitting through that introduction and let's get right into it so we are starting off 
really strong here. This first question is from an, from an anonymous submitter, and it goes, having a tough time empowering myself to speak up in conversation still. I feel like I know what I want to say, but I choke up when I'm about to advocate for my needs. How can I get past this? So I think it's really important that we start off by acknowledging <laughs> that when we've been people pleasing for so so long when it's so familiar to us to just shift right into self-abandonment when we're really afraid of disappointing somebody or being inconvenienced we shift to that to that way of walking through the world because it's what feels familiar and therefore it's what feels safe to us why it feels safe is because in the past each and every single time that we've acted out in that way people have received us with with thank yous with grace with love right so our brain says okay well when i abandon myself i receive love when i abandon myself i receive acceptance you've gathered the facts to prove to yourself and to your brain that self abandonment is what will equal acceptance love grace from people around you what the other side of that coin now has to be is stepping into your truth and acquiring that same evidence to prove to yourself that standing in your truth will give you love. Now, let's be real here. Let's address the elephant in that question. That's not always going to be the case. And that's really scary. That's what ignites that people-pleasing wound is I know I should stand in my truth right now, but if I do and it's not received, I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve this person's time, their energy. But this is where we are the ones that have to state and tell ourselves what our conditions are for being told or how we allow ourselves to feel that we are not lovable, that we are not worthy. If somebody responds to a boundary that you set or if somebody tells you, that was a really unattractive thing to say when you stood in your truth or I don't agree with that at all. You're this and this and this. And then you allow that to make you feel unworthy, to make you feel unlovable. That is where we are giving something a certain meaning that it doesn't have. We're the ones that get to decide in that moment what our worth is, what our lovability is. So. Of course, it doesn't mean that it's not going to hurt. It doesn't mean that it's not going to sting. But we can't use those experiences as the truth of how, when we show up in the world in a certain way, it's going to be received. Because the people that want to be active partakers in your healing process, they will receive your truth and love you for it and thank you for it. So... I would say that in these moments where you're really afraid, where you're feeling yourself choke up or you're about to silence yourself, allow yourself to be honest about, hey, I'm really afraid to be honest with you about this boundary that I want to set, about this thing that I want to tell you because in the past it wasn't received that way. And I'm really afraid that you're going to see me differently, that you're going to love me less, that you're going to reject me. But I want to be honest with you about how I want to be here, how I want to show up in this relationship. And when you enter those conversations in that way, holding your heart on your sleeve and not letting your past dictate how you show up differently, you open the floor for you and that person to become active participants in you and you and each other's healing journeys, right? So be open to having those conversations, be open to opening those conversations stating your fears and allowing the people in your life who love you and who see you and who want you to show up in your authenticity give you the evidence that you need to solidify the belief that if i stand in my authenticity i am still worthy of love okay that's my answer to number one there thank you so much for that beautiful beautiful submission all right question number two is also an anonymous submission and the question asks after people pleasing for so long, how can one set boundaries when they're worried about coming across as rude? So 
I know that this is a huge point of fear for a lot of people who are chronic people pleasers, who are healing their inner people pleaser wounds. So I want to just take a moment to hold space for your fear and for your apprehension because I know that it's it's scary the first few times you do it. I still get so, so afraid at stating a boundary or even thinking about stating a boundary, right? But just like in the previous question, it's about gathering the practice and the evidence to see that the right people are going to receive our authentic truth as an opportunity to deepen our relationships with them. So I think in this question, again, similar to the previous one, when you're walking into these conversations where you are being really honest about how you're feeling, but still wanting to self-honor your needs and your desires and your, your, your essence, your authenticity, right? You are so so honorable for telling that person hey i really want to set this boundary because i think it's what's going to honor me and my needs the most but i'm really afraid of telling you this because it in the past it wasn't received well or i i've never done this before i don't know how it's going to be received what do you think and also remember to reaffirm to the person that the boundary that you're setting is in an effort to take care of yourself so that you can show up for them in the best way that you can, okay? So I think those are beautiful touch points because now you're inviting that person into your experience. You are leading with honesty so that you can create a space where those boundaries, those limits can be talked about, okay? It's really a beautiful thing when you invite somebody to be part of that process because, yeah, like like we said, the first few times, it might not feel right. We might set a boundary that is really extreme or we might set a boundary that somebody's not okay with. That's not to say that you shouldn't stand in that, that you should abandon your knees because somebody wasn't okay with a boundary that you set because it's not always going to be the case, right? Somebody's always going to have contention. But open that dialogue, open that dialogue to see what they have to say, open the space for there to be a two-sided conversation about how you're going to honor everybody's needs in your relationship by doing the things to secure those needs, okay? And one more thing too is if you're really afraid that it's a really extreme boundary or that it's not going to be received well, you're always, always welcome if you feel safe to do so to bounce it off of friends, right? Hey, I'm really thinking about telling my partner that I want to go to bed earlier or that I'm not okay um, with having alcohol more than once a week. What do you think about that? And really just have those conversations with other people who you know are going to empower you to stand in your truth or who, and who are going to check you when you aren't and when you're abandoning yourself so that you can feel more confident. It's like practicing outside of a game setting right if you've never played basketball before the minute that you throw yourself into the court you're gonna be like which way do i go how do i free throw etc cetera, etc cetera, right but if you practice outside of the gym outside of the hoops <laughs> you'll score better it might not mean that you get the ball right in the hoop i've carried this analogy for way too long now but it might not mean that you get a three-pointer but it does mean that you've had the experience to at least know how to facilitate those conversations. I ended the analogy. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you again so much for that submission and for asking that. I know that is going to resonate with so, so many people here. Question number three is a submission from Savannah. And this one says, I've often heard that people pleasers can be narcissistic. Is this true? And how do we differentiate? between someone who is people-pleasing to secure love and someone who is people-pleasing out of narcissism? This is such an interesting question, and this is actually something that was brought to my attention in a few YouTube comments and in my DMs about, oh, well, people-pleasers are just covert narcissists. Why are you defending them? Um, it's actually super selfish when you're a people-pleaser. Now, I really want to hold space for this because I think we have to make two distinctions here. And I actually have the definition of narcissist pulled up right in front of me. A narcissist is someone who is extremely self-centered, 
with an exaggerated sense of self-importance. That's a narcissist. And a people pleaser is someone who is operating from a deep fear that their needs, their truth is what is going to make them lose love. Okay? Now, shame in both situations, right? A lot of people who have narcissistic tendencies have those tendencies because of a deep seat of shame within them. And so do people pleasers. I think the fine line here exists in that if somebody is a people pleaser who is being driven so deeply by subconscious patterns and subconscious wounding, it's like this very anxious response to, okay, yeah, sure, I will drop everything to meet you at the Cineplex at eight, right? Sure, I will drop everything to take this phone call right now, right? It's like this super anxious and automatic response that is so rooted in a deep fear of unlivability, of rejection, right? If someone was a people pleaser, but also a narcissist, this is a very interesting scenario. I don't think I've ever thought about it like that before. I think the difference would be, is that person holding their self-abandonment against you and saying, I dropped everything to come see you. What are you doing for me now? Or don't you see I lied to you to make to get you to like me? Why don't you like me? Or you have to make me like you or something like that, right? All of a sudden they are taking their conscious actions and turning them against you and expecting something in return. I would say that that would be the fine line because we have to understand that people pleasing, yes, it's, it's a double-edged sword because it's done in an effort to secure love. People pleasers have a subconscious pattern that says, if I abandon myself right now, this person will love me. If I abandon myself and give this response, this person will accept me. So in some way, yes, it's, we, we could say that it's selfish because that person is trying to control the outcome by showing up in a way that is unaligned with their truth. But again, I think the key difference here between a true narcissist and a true people pleaser is that one is rooted in self-interest in a greedy way, narcissism, and the other is rooted in a very deep fear response. And of course, it's not that it's black or white. It's not that they can't coexist in one situation. That is why we have to have the conversations to become aware of our patterns, to become aware of how us and the people we love really are, really hold space for their truth so that we can check each other when we're shifting out of alignment, when we see that the people in our life are shifting out of their truth, when we're shifting out of our truth and affirming each other, holding space for those fears, like I talked about in previous questions. So it's a fantastic question. Thank you for bringing that to light. But of course, also, let's not point the finger because again, Yes, it's the, the, the fear that is driving the, the actions of a people pleaser are there to secure a certain outcome, but I don't think it's fair that we suddenly point the finger and call everybody who's a people pleaser an underlying narcissist or greedy or selfish, right? It's a primal need to be loved, to be seen, to be accepted into our communities, and I think when we see it that way, we can give ourselves and each other so much more grace. So thank you so much for that question because that was so vulnerable and so important, I think, in this conversation because I think they are two different things. So thank you so much, Savannah, for that. Our fourth question is also from Anonymous sub Submitter, and it is, how can a content creator who is also a people pleaser practice showing up authentically on social media love this question particularly because this is something that i have struggled with so much in the last month now i want to say one point to this first and it is from a conversation that i was listening to yesterday on a podcast between matthew hussey and mark groves and Mark Groves, who was being interviewed by Matthew, he is the, the founder of Create the Love. He has his own podcast called the Mark Groves Podcast, just an incredible human being. And 
Mark Groves just got off of Instagram. Like he deleted the app on his phone. His team is doing it for him now, like semi-regularly. He's a very successful business. And Matthew was like, what has that experience been for you? And he said something that made me feel so seen and held and validated. And I hope it makes you feel the same way on a more technical level. He spoke about how we give so much weight to an algorithm that we can't keep up with that dictates the success of the things we make. Because if you weren't creating a video that was on a trend, on a trending topic, with a trending audio, with a trending hashtag, with a trending look to it, all of a sudden your algorithm says, discard, it's not making it into the public eye. How many of us can say that we've made a post, a reel, a story, whatever, that we were so proud of, maybe you poured three, four hours into it, you were so happy with it, it was packed with value, and all of a sudden it gets... 50, 100, 200 views, and we're like, well, obviously this sucks. Nobody likes my work. I'm a failure. I'm an awful content creator, right? It's so easy to allow your worth to be dictated by something that you have no control over. And it's so easy to get on that rat race of like always, always chasing virality and always, always chasing the status that we think dictates our success. But really, that algorithm, we have no way of controlling. We have no way of predicting it. So why are we so obsessed with proving ourselves to this machine that operates on its own terms or operates according to what people find appealing or trendy nowadays? We're not here to be trendy. We're not here to please everybody. And I think that's a beautiful segue into this question. When you are making content for people to relate to, for people to find value in, for people to see themselves mirrored in, you are the one that has to decide what you want to be seen for. Who are you? Why does your story have resonance with other people? Why are you unique? What legacy do you want to leave behind? And once you set those terms, you have to show up in that. And now it's a very conscious practice because it's super, super easy to see all the trending audio and say, okay, I'm going to hop on this trend. There's also nothing wrong with that, right? I think it's healthy to squeeze that in there to have that visibility and to have that fun too, right? But the minute that you start creating for other people, to be seen a certain way, to gain some kind of visibility that you've now dictated is what dictates your worth and your success, you are radiating something other than what you want to radiate. You're not radiating authenticity anymore. You're not radiating your truth, your essence anymore. And so the people that you want to come to you aren't going to come to you. And the people that do, one day you're going to look back and say, I don't resonate with these people. This isn't the crowd that I set out to to create for, to serve, right? So I think that's the first part is we have to decide who we're going to be and who we're going to continue showing up in regardless of the freaking number of likes on our posts, okay? I hear you. It's hard. It's a hit to the ego, but really it's an algorithm that we can't keep up with. Like, let's not put so much weight on it, okay? The second thing too is that we have to have the courage to be disliked. And I think that that starts with addressing our fear about what happens if somebody dislikes us, what happens if somebody disagrees with us. Of course, the big reinforcer that I think we can all relate to here is cancel culture, right? What if I say something that somebody calls me out on? What if I say something that cancels me, gets me gets me shunned out by the entire world? I think you have to make such a big ignorant mistake to even fathom having that happen. But also, what are you more willing to do? Are you more willing to continue showing up in a way that is not in alignment with who you are? Or are you willing to to show up in a way that if you do make a mistake, you can also show that you have the humility to make up for it, that you have the humility and the willingness to learn how to show up better? That is what people want to see when 
they have felt in some way offended in some way that you said something uneducated right and at the end of the day the people that love you the people that see you the people that know you are not going to write you off for one mistake okay you weren't put here to be liked by everybody you weren't put here to mold yourself into a version that is going to be liked by everybody you have to acknowledge that not everybody's going to agree with your work i've had so many comments on my content telling me that i'm just another voice in the world of self-help and i that i contribute nothing to the world and that my posts are dumb and that i have have no value right i'm a fake i'm not professional okay I can show you my list of testimonials of women who've set the total opposite, right? I can show you the DMs of people who've told me that I shifted something in them, right? I don't say that for putting myself on a pedestal. I say that to say, liberate, allow yourself to liberate yourself from the weight that it is to always carry that fear on your shoulders. You're going to be okay. Because your humility and your essence will attract the people that actually matter and that actually want to listen to you and what you have to say. That is my advice to you <clears throat> for that question. Thank you so much. Another high point of curiosity for a lot of people, I'm sure, who are listening to this, myself included. We're healing that wound together. I can guarantee you that. So thank you for bringing that to light. Our fifth and final question for this Q&A is from Sahil, and it goes, in your interview with Karena, you spoke about unattachment as a practice for people pleasers. Can you elaborate more on what that is and why it's important? Thank you so much for listening to my interview with Karena. Again, if you haven't listened to it, it is the episode previous to this one called Karena Soto, Embrace Your Truth to Break the Chains of People Pleasing. I will link it in the show notes so that you can go and have access to it. But Karena brought up this beautiful point, and I believe I went on to elaborate on it and kind of give the definition, so to expand it out here for you. <clears throat> unattachment is not the same as indifference, okay? Unattachment is not tying our worth, our desirability, our lovability to the responses of other people. As you can see, this is a core theme that has transcended this conversation, Right? Unattachment simply means that when you stand in your truth and somebody doesn't receive it in the way that you hoped, you don't turn that back on yourself to say, I have to make myself smaller. I have to tone myself down to be loved. It's no, I don't attach myself to your response so that I can continue standing in my essence. I don't attach what I know to be true about who I am and what I desire and what I need to how you did or did not validate what I just said or how I just showed up for you. That is unattachment at its core. It's not the same as indifference. It's not the same as not caring, right? Because you can be unattached to something and still feel the, the disappointment, the hurt of not being received for how you wished you were received. But again, that is where we have to love ourselves and know how we need to be loved so that we can guide others on how to do that. I think it's so easy to write people off when they didn't receive us a certain way or they didn't respond in a way that we wanted to and say, I'm done with you. I'm never speaking to you again. And of course, there are instances in which maybe somebody insulted us really deeply or somebody completely neglected our needs or somebody wrote us off entirely where we can say, okay, maybe my person, this person is not worth my energy. But I would say that in a lot of situations with the right courageous conversations, we can arrive at a place where we understand our needs and another person's needs and why we need to be loved a certain way or why we need to be seen, heard, validated a certain way according to how we desire to receive love. Okay, so... That's unattachment. Now, why it's important is because the more that we live through our authentic expression, the more we feel safe in our relationships because we are now cultivating a sense of safety, not through self-abandonment, but through showing up in our authentic essence. Your stress levels go down, 
you will open yourself up to more love because now your mind and your body are understanding that who you are is enough. Okay? And it kind of comes back to the content creation stuff, right? In that we have to be okay with not everybody agreeing with us. We have to be okay with being misunderstood. We have to be okay with not being everybody's cup of tea. And that's okay because the minute that we develop that capacity, we're no longer seeking to mold ourselves into a version of ourselves that is here to appease everybody, that is here to meet everybody else's needs before we meet our own. There's this beautiful phrase that Glennon Doyle says in her book, Untamed, which if you haven't read before, I highly, highly recommend it. Such a powerful, powerful read. She says, are you willing to walk around for the rest of your life knowing that you're not showing up in your entirety, in your authenticity to appease other people? Or are you willing to take the risk to stand in your essence for long enough to see who resonates with you, who mirrors that back to you? Because the minute that you do, you become a magnet for the people that love you and desire your presence, your energy, your time, your words, your wisdom. Because you've dared to show up in your authenticity. It's a beautiful thing, trust me, when you get to a place in which you resonate with people that way, you see people that way, you allow yourself to be received by people that way. It just takes standing in that for long enough to walk through the world differently, to learn to walk into interactions differently, and radiate who we are our lovability our worth and our value for people to see we are the ones that get to set that standard nobody else so that's why that's important and really really key in healing our inner people pleaser because at, at its core root again it's a fear of not being loved or not being enough in our authenticity but you are i promise that you that you are and i say this to my friends all the time when they're like oh i'm so sorry like i have not been myself today. I was way too sad. That was so emotional. Why did I even say that? I always, always say to them, I want you as you are right now. I don't want any other version of you. Because if I really were to say, oh my gosh, yeah, you were really sad. Why did you do that? Why did you show up so sad today? Why um, are you dumping all your problems on, on me? It's like me wanting a version of other than the one that they're having the courage to stand in. One that's different from the one that they're having the courage to show up as. I don't want any other version of the people that I love. I want who they are. And there are people in your life who desire the same from you. I can promise you that. And if you haven't experienced that, dare to stand in your authenticity for long enough to see who arrives at your front door asking to share the beauty of the energy of your authenticity. Okay, that is all for this month, my friends. Thank you for sticking around, for healing the inner people pleaser. I hoped it helped you on your journey of healing your inner people pleaser. And if you tuned in this month, if you watched any of the episodes, if you watched any of the content, if you purchased my healing the inner people pleaser journal, which by the way, is still 777 until May 15th. It's 11 very deep, very transformative, very powerful journal prompts into the three phases of people pleaser healing called alignment, awareness, oh my gosh, awareness, amplification, and alignment. They slipped my mind for there for a second a beautiful addition to your inner work. So I highly recommend that you go check it out. I will link it in the show notes for you to get access to with a video from yours truly explaining three phases and how to get the most out of your practice. But it is such a brave act that you did to show up today and to be willing to confront those fears and those thought patterns and to dedicate your time to this work. So I just want to give you all the kudos. I want to thank you for trusting me to guide you on this journey. I want to thank you for committing to growth with me today and anytime that you've tuned in to listen. It is such an honor, such a privilege as always to have your trust, have your faith that I can guide you towards a more open, more 
vulnerable, more courageous version of yourself. So thank you for for being here and for trusting me with that. Once again, please, please, please stay connected. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast here on YouTube if you're watching or whatever podcast platform that you are tuning in from. Like this episode, send it to somebody who you think needs to hear it as well to heal their own inner people pleaser. Stay connected on Instagram and TikTok. It's at commitment to growth. You can also check the show notes for links to my social medias as well. You can always contact me on my website. It's www.commitmenttogrowth.com. Just head over to the contact form, shoot me a message. I would love to hear from you on what more content you want to see here. If you want to be a guest on the podcast yourself, if you have questions about one-on-one coaching or anything like that, And there's lots of resources there for you to check out, some free workbooks. I've got a free masterclass for my people who are looking for self-evolution. I'll link it in the show notes as well. And that is everything for this week. Thank you for joining me today and always such a privilege. I love you so, so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next episode. Love you lots.